In this video, we will introduce our paper published in Journal of Materials Chemistry A about first principles study on electrochemical and chemical stability of solid electrolyte and electrode interfaces in all solid state lithium batteries. This paper has been featured on the front cover of the journal. If you like the graphic design, click the like button. So let's begin. As we know, all solid state lithium battery is a promising next generation lithium battery technology. It uses a ceramic solid electrolyte to replace flammable electrolyte, which cause safety issue in lithium battery. One of the key issues in solid state battery is its high interfacial resistance at the electrolyte electrode interfaces, limiting the power and rate performance of all solid state battery. The origin of high interfacial resistance has been attributed to poor interfacial contact, mechanical failure of the solid contacts, interfacial degradation due to mutual diffusion, and also the formation of lithium depleted space charge layer. Early studies ignore the possibilities of decomposition at the interface because people generally think solid electrolytes has excellent stability, which is not the case as we shown here. There have been multiple experimental and computation studies that showed the interfacial decomposition and the formation of interface layer at the solid electrolyte and electrode interfaces. The formation of these interfaces would lead to increase of interfacial resistance, interfacial degradation, low columbic efficiency. In particular, since many formed interface decomposition layers are poor lithium conductor, this would result in high interfacial resistance. Thinking from first principles, there are three thermodynamic mechanisms that can lead to the degradation at the interface and the formation of interface layers. They are the reduction and oxidation of solid electrolytes under applied potential. This is due to the limited electrochemical window of solid electrolyte materials. The chemical reactions between the solid electrolyte and electrode materials can cause a chemical incompatibility between the electrolyte and electrode. This happens particularly if you heat treatment of your battery, which is often applied to improve the solid-solid contact in solid-state battery. Similarly, these solid electrolyte and electrode interfaces can go through electrochemical reactions during the voltage cycling of the battery. The goal of our study is employ a computation scheme based on first principle calculations to evaluate all these thermodynamics at the interfaces between solid electrolyte and electrode in solid state battery. Here we show the schematic diagram of all solid state battery, where you can see the cathodes are a composite mixture of solid electrolyte and active materials, including some electron conducting additives. There are significant amount of interfaces in solid electrolyte battery. That's why understanding the limitation at these interfaces are really crucial. Our study starts with the first mechanism, which is the electrochemical stability of the solid electrolyte materials themselves. We have presented the results in our previous presentation and earlier papers, and we will summarize it here in section 3.1 of our paper. The results are resummarized in figure one and table two. To summarize, most solid electron materials have limited electrochemical window for battery application. In particular, this graph shows the decomposition energy of solid electrolyte at high and low applied voltage. This highly negative decomposition energy suggests the decomposition of solid electrolyte at high and low voltages are extremely strong. Then we examine the chemical equilibrium between solid electrolyte and the cathode materials. From thermodynamics, we know that the equilibrium between two materials can be achieved only when their chemical potential are equal to each other. So here we examine the chemical potential in cathode and solid electrolyte materials. Here gives the chemical potential of oxygen. As you can see, cathode lithium oxide are stable at this oxygen-rich environment. So is this oxide's solid electrolyte. They can achieve an equilibrium with a constant oxygen chemical potential. However, for sulfide solid electrolyte, you can see they can only stable at extremely poor oxygen environment because these materials react with oxygen. 
Therefore, there's an oxygen chemical potential gap between the cathode and the sulfide, especially with deleciated cathode. This suggests that the mu O cannot be equilibrium between cathode and sulfide salt electrolyte. Similarly, for sulfur chemical potential, sulfide salt electrolyte are very sulfur rich, but cathode are very sulfur poor. Therefore, they cannot find the constant mu S that they can achieve equilibrium. These results tell us the incompatibility between oxide cathode and the sulfide salt electrolyte are due to their ion chemistry. These results are summarized in figure two and table three in the paper, where you can see how this salt electrolyte decomposes at the equilibrium oxygen chemical potential of cathode materials. Then we further check the chemical stability, the chemical reactions between salt electrolyte and the lithium cobalt oxide cathode materials. The method we use are pure thermodynamics, where we mix the cathode materials and the salt electrolyte with a certain mixing ratio. Then at a given mixing ratio, we try to identify whether there are other phase combinations that at the same composition would give lower energy. The phase combination that gives the lowest energy is called phase equilibrium. If such phase equilibria exist, it means the cathode and salt electrolyte can react with this mixing ratio to form this phase equilibria and gives a significant amount of decomposition energy. The calculation results suggest sulfide salt electrolyte and lithium cobalt oxide have a highly favorable reaction. Oxide salt electrolyte are significantly more stable than sulfide salt electrolyte, but many still show favorable reactions. The results are summarized in figure three for both lithiated and deliciated cathode showing dashed line. And the most favorable reaction are summarized in table four, where you can see for sulfide, the reaction is highly favorable and the reaction products listed here. Such reaction between sulfide salt electrolyte and lithium cobalt oxide has been confirmed in experiments, such as this study by Sakuda and this study by Yannick. The reaction at the interface lead to the formation of cobalt sulfides, which is electronic conducting. For the lipon and the lithium cobalt oxide interface, thermodynamics still suggest a favorable reaction. Lithium phosphate is a major reaction product. This interface reaction has been confirmed in in-situ TM studies. However, we think this reaction at the interface is self-limiting because the reaction product is a good coating layer for the cathode, which protects the cathode and interface from further decomposition. Therefore, we can summarize the cathode salt electron interface into three types. The leaf pond lithium cobalt oxide interface is forms a stable salt electrolyte interface layer or cathode electrolyte interface layer, which provide lithium ion conduction and stabilize the interface. The sulfide salt electrolyte and lithium cobalt oxide forms a mixed ionic and electronic conductor interface. Therefore, this interface layer cannot stop further decomposition reaction. Such type of interface should be avoided. Another type of interface shows thermodynamic intrinsic stability between the electrolyte and the cathode. This may exist for some oxide salt electrolyte. The next question is, for the unstable and incompatible sulfide salt electrolyte and lithium cobalt oxide cathode interface, how can we make it stable? This has been demonstrated by applying oxide coding. Here we evaluate the electrochemical window of commonly demonstrated cathode coding. And we find that all these cathode coating materials have a favorable electrochemical window between less than two volt to four volt. So this cathode coating can achieve an equilibrium with the cathode and also with the salt electrolyte. Furthermore, we also evaluate the chemical compatibility between the oxide coating with cathode and also the oxide coating with the electrolyte. The results are shown in table six. Many of these coating materials shows good stability with both the cathode, charged or discharged, and also with salt electrolyte confirming the chemical stability of the coating materials. Some interesting trend of these coating materials can also be observed in figure five. When the lithium concentration decreases, 
the reduction limit gets higher and so is the oxidation limit. This trend helps to select appropriate coating materials. By the use of coating materials, the cathode and solid electrolyte interface is stabilized. This has been confirmed experimentally by Professor Cannon, where the coated interface shows improved electrochemical stability at high voltage. Takata's experiments also shows that when the coating is applied, interface side reaction decreases significantly, and so is the interfacial resistance. Therefore, we think one key contributor to the high interfacial resistance is this formation of decomposition layers. Our results offer important guidelines for the interface engineering of solid state battery. To form stable interfaces, one good example is the LiPom solid electrolyte battery, where the keys are spontaneously form stable solid electrolyte interface. Another example is for the sulfide electrolyte, where artificial oxide coating layers stabilize the interface. Novel interface engineering techniques to spontaneously form stable solid electrolyte interface is also very important. I hope you enjoy this paper. Thank you for watching.